Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Riverbed Hunt, which is brought to you by Odd Statue Games. It's for four to nine players, ages 10 and up, and games generally run about 20 to 45 minutes. Imitating humans and constructing houses and large ships, Tritons quickly became a trading folk, and their agricultural villages flourished on the river bank of Lee. Triton merchants are known for being able to provide extremely rare goods, such as dried starlight kelp seeds from Lee's riverbed. Humans are willing to pay great sums for that, giving the Triton merchants the incentive to search for it, extract it, provide it to their markets, and as a result, this trade has endangered the survival of the planet. However, a group of Tritons, which the governing order calls Separatists, dissatisfied with the commercial policy of their fellow citizens and afraid of the outer world's influences, started protesting and sabotaging the merchant's trade of the sacred, to them, kelp seed. Of course, there are those who try to take advantage of the whole situation and in secrecy exploit both sides for their own benefit. Welcome to the world of Riverbed Hunt. So yes, this is a big social deduction game. You are trying to discern who is who, but also along the way, you need to find the right type of resource for your faction in order to win. And based on player count, will determine how many tiles, which cards get put into play, how many separatists, how many merchants and so forth. So I'm set up here for a four player game, but it plays up to nine, which both of those counts worked really well. So, in order to win the game, each faction will need to find the right type of elements or resources for their group. So, for the merchants who like to trade with the humans and get along in the world, they're looking for the kelp plants. And if you're a separatist, you're trying to stop the merchants by finding enough wood in order to push the edge in your direction. But if you're the profiteer, you're just about gold. You're playing both sides of the fence. And those are the different types of elements or resources that you're gonna need for each of the different factions. But based on player count, we'll show you how much you need of a certain type of element. So in a four player game, the merchants will need to find six kelp plants. However, the separatists only need to find three wood. And if you are the profiteer, you need to find six coins. So it's varied, like I said, and obviously that gives you a hint that wood might be a little more scarce on the board. Now, as you'd expect, each of the factions has their own leader for the merchants, for the separatists. However, the profiteer is working on their own. And there are some special abilities around these characters, but before we take a look at those, we have to understand how these basic actions work. So each player will have a set of three cards that represent four basic actions. You also have an ability card, which we'll get to, that can help you as well. But on your turn, you can perform one basic action and use one of your ability cards. So let's take a look at Swim. Swim is all about maneuvering around the board. And you can move one to two spaces, and if there's a gap, you'll just move by that as the river will take you to your destination. Uh, that's gonna vary again based on player count, how many gaps there are in the river. So you're just moving to a spot, maybe position yourself getting ready for the uncovering of a tile or just trying to move around the board and discover tiles. And at the end of your swim action, you'll be able to draw one ability card. And then you'll have to flip over your swim action card, showing that it won't be available to you until you can refresh it. And there's a couple different ways to do that. Then we have dive. Dive is all about discovering tiles just for yourself, privately getting some information about what is under that tile. So in this position here, you'll see that you can discover the tile you're on or either of the adjacent tiles. Just again, taking a close look at it and putting it back face down. And then of course you have to flip over your dive action card. So this is a perfect time to take a closer look at one of these tiles so you kind of understand how they work. Now, these things won't activate until you actually flip the tile over for everyone to see and we're coming to that. But let's take a look at this one for example. It'll show that you have gold and you have wood and then you have some text that will trigger based on position of people around this tile. Now, the thing here is that once this becomes available or revealed, then you would use these different elements and track them on the board, but you would always start at the top and move your way down. So potentially, if you just needed one more gold for the profiteer here, they would just win the game before you got to the wood. Next up, we have the co-op action. Now, this is about you, the active player, hoping you have enough information to pick the right people, but you pick someone to reveal a tile, and then you calculate the resources or elements on the scoreboard, potentially winning the game, but just moving up the different tracks. 
based on that tile that is shown. Now, at the end of that though, you will get to draw an ability card, you the active player, and also refresh your swim and dive cards if you've used them. The last basic action available to you is uncover. So this might be one that you're gonna save till perhaps later in the game or maybe the midpoint because it allows you to pick a tile and reveal it and calculate those elements on the scoreboard. But you have to discard an ability card in order to take advantage of that. And this uncover action can only be activated once per game. Again, flipping this card over, showing that it's no longer available to you for the rest of the game. So each player will have their own set of these action cards, tapping into them throughout the course to try to get enough information and get enough points. Now you also have a token in your color, and this is another potential way. Once per game, you can flip this token over to refresh one of your actions that perhaps you need to use right away. But it cannot be used to refresh the uncover action because again, that's once per game. Also on your turn, you have the option of using one of those ability cards. Now, these ability cards have a whole array of things they're gonna do for you, but some of the basics here is that they can affect you, the active player, or allow you to pick another player at the table to do various things, like flip tiles, or perhaps shift tiles around the board so folks lose some critical information that they had about where tiles are placed. Now what's interesting here is that if there's a face up tile and you flip it to face down position, then those elements, those points that have been scored will be lost. You'll move the tracker the opposite direction. So that brings us back to the different factions. Let's kick it off with the merchant leader. Now, one of their big advantages is the fact that they get to start with their card face up at the beginning of the game, giving the other merchants at the table some information about who they might pick in those co-op actions. And then you have the separatist leader. Now, if someone picks them as a co-op option, they can reveal their card and discard an ability card in order to enter into the hunt which means they get to reveal a tile in the normal fashion, any adjacent or any within reach tile. Now, in the top left corner of that tile, if it has the icon represented by the hunt, then they can go start revealing tiles anywhere around the board one at a time until they reveal a tile that does not have that symbol. The separatist leader can also choose to stop the hunt whenever they see fit. Then we have the privateer, and they have something called the con. So similar, if they are chosen in a co-op action, they can discard an ability card, reveal their card, and enter into the con. Which means they, again, they reveal a tile within reach, just like normal, but they also get to reveal one other tile anywhere around the board. So as you can imagine, either of these things are potentially huge point swings back and forth, revealing those elements. So the chief merchant has one more trick up its sleeve. When the separatist goes into the hunt on the board, if that last tile they revealed does not have the hunt icon in the top left corner, well then the hunt penalty triggers, giving the merchant the ability to go flip one of those tiles that revealed wood back to its face down position. So those are the basics of play. Again, you're trying to learn enough information about the other players at the table, trying to pick the right people to flip tiles at the right time. And it does get pretty interesting in those higher player counts for sure. Lots of mistrust going around the board and you hope in the end to be the faction with the highest level of elements in order to win the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, this game has a lot of mistrust going on, just like any good social deduction game, but I like the fact that you're after resources or elements in order to win the game, and using your different actions very wisely in order to do that, pick the right people, learn what you can about each of the players at the table, trying to make that race to the finish line in order to get the right number of points for your faction. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.